All right, welcome back to another video, everybody. Um, I'm Anton, this is Aggie, she's back from Poland. So now we get to make some more videos for you guys. Um, today, our thoughts are working on escaping bad positions. Basically, the most important things that any beginner should really learn. Um, some gyms like to focus on submissions, which I always approve of. I think you should always know how to submit and the goal is to finish fights. But if you're a beginner, the most likely scenario you're gonna find yourself in is in a negative position. You're gonna be getting put in side control, you're gonna be getting mounted, you're gonna be getting your back taken. So it's really important early on to get exceptionally proficient at escaping bad positions, right? When I talk about white belts going to blue belt, blue belts going to purple belt, I have a concept of what I think they should all know. And my thoughts on white belts going to blue belt is you need to be very good at escaping bad positions. You shouldn't be able to be held down by other white belts or blue belts. If they can hold you down, you're probably not quite ready for that next, um, next level up, right? So if someone gets a side control, you need to have answers, okay? If someone gets a mount, you need to have answers. Of course, the submissions will get gathered up as like a snowball rolling downhill picks up debris. You're gonna be picking up submissions as you're learning all these things, but it's exceptionally important early on to get very proficient at escaping the bad positions. And then you'll start to be able to stop them from happening altogether. Obviously, prevention um, is, is where you really wanna be, but we, we will get stuck in those bad positions and we need to know how to get out of them. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at escaping side control. We're gonna be looking at escaping mount and we're gonna be looking at escaping the back. Within all of these positions and escapes, there's tons of variations, right? When it comes to side control escapes, there's three main methods. The elbow escapes, near side underhooks, and far side underhooks. And of course, there's tons of variations within each method. Today, I'm gonna to show you my favorite way, the most efficient way that I've found over my course of jiu-jitsu. Same with the mount, and same with the back. Okay, and there's tons of ways to escape them. I'm just gonna show you my favorite ways, the ways that work for me best, okay? So we're gonna start from a basic conventional side control where they have cross face underhook, chest to chest, and they're holding you down. Okay, we're gonna look at how we can really develop some escape potential, all right? So here on my side, and Aggie's done a really good job of passing my guard, putting me on my back, getting chest to chest, and getting all of the inside position. Can you need a little higher? Here. She has an um, inside position between my knee and elbow here. Between my knee and elbow here. She's between my head and ear and shoulder on this side, and between my ear and shoulder on this side. She owns all the inside position. And this is a situation I cannot tolerate. Inside position wins fights, okay? So we're really lucky in one regard. It's the first motion that I need to get into for my escapes is generally the easiest. It's very hard for her to monitor. And that's the hip side elbow. I wanna get my hip side elbow inside her hip, okay? Now, usually it's about that easy. If they're really tight key, like their knees against your ear, bring your knee all the way to my ear, and it's a little harder, you just do a little bridge, and boom, pop, and now you're inside. That's all I need, is my elbow inside the hip, okay? Do not put your hand on their hip like you're pushing them away for two reasons. Bench pressing and tricep extensions are very weak, and they're not gonna recover and last long. Secondly, if she were to drop her hip to the mat here, she could wrist lock me. If you start bringing your right hip towards the mat, like, yeah, sorry, stay right there, yeah, see? Woo. So she can wrist lock me there, which is not gonna be good for you, the match is over, right? So just try to chop the hip. All I'm trying to do here is keep her hips at elbow distance from me. So now if she tried to mount me, it'd be very hard, because I can keep her hips away, and if she tried to walk more south, I can monitor her. It'd be very hard for her to go anywhere, okay? So I get my elbow inside, and now what I want to start doing is recovering my legs. If I can get this frame in, in front of her face, this will be very good for me, right? But sometimes you can't get that frame in, and that's okay. What that tells me is she's very tight to my upper body, so my hips are free. So I get the elbow in, I move my hips away like a hip escape. And now I bring my knee to my elbow. Okay, go ahead and sit up real quick. You see how my knee and elbow are touching? and my forearm and shin make a V, it's a little valley. She's in that valley, and I know that I'm controlling her hips, and I'm part of the way through my recovery. Okay, let's back up a tiny bit. So here, we're in side control. Okay, I get my elbow inside. Move my hips away and bring my knee to my elbow. Now, since I have my leg in position, I now have a pushing mechanism. 
So now I can push her away a little bit here using my knee. If she lets herself, see how she let herself kind of, her knee leave her elbow? She's in a very weak position here. So most of the time, people are gonna keep their knees tucked under them, and as I push their hips away, it extends their arms. So now it's very easy for me to get a frame inside, a frame inside, and now I can keep our chest separated. If she tried to close her distance here on me, it'd be almost impossible. Now, I'm pretty flexible with my legs, as most of you know, but even from here, it's hard for me to get my legs inside, because my foot gets caught. So I do another little hip escape, and then I draw my legs inside. And a lot of times I have little submissions here where I can shoot um, different options. All right, let's back up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna get the elbow inside, inside position. Move my hips away, bring my knee and elbow together. I make space. Develop inside position here. Here, don't let them cross face you again. Trying to grab my head. I can't let her grab my head. Another little hip escape, draw my feet inside, and now I'm ready to go into whatever attacks that I wanna play from there. Always use your defensive motions as a precursor to offense. Always. Okay? Nothing feels shittier than being inside top side control. They recover and put you right in a triangle. It's awful. Right? So that's my favorite way, most consistent, most efficient way that I escape my side controls with a basic knee elbow escape. I do a knee elbow escape, a secondary hip escape, and then I recover my legs. Okay? Love it. Works all the time. I guess big people, small people, good people, bad people, strong people, it doesn't matter. Alright? So now let's look at the mountain escape I like to play, okay? This mountain escape is also very efficient. If they're really strong, really big, I'm not really moving a lot of their weight, so I find it to be very effective for me, okay? So she's gonna be mounted here, and I made a lot of mistakes if we get here, right? Something really bad, either she did something really cool, really special, or I did something really stupid or really bad, or a combination of the two, but I've ended up here. Okay, so now what I want to do is, is I want to put both of my hands on her hips. Okay, I like to stack my hands on one hip. So if we're like this, and she's really close to me, I want this hand on the other hip, I just do a little bump, boom, hand on the hip. And now I stack them, so I, I have both hands, both, uh, all of my strength being able to keep her hips down. What's really important here is that her hips ride over mine. If she starts coming up high, 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 bring your knees high. Look, my elbows get out of position, and now she can start arm barring me, mounted triangles, monoplatas, omoplatas, whatever she wants, go goes, I don't know, right? So it's important that my elbows are low and keeping her hips down. I need her hips to ride on mine because my hips are my power source, okay? So now that I have her hips on mine, the side that my, or, uh, and the side that my hands are on, I'm gonna take my body to that side. What's so, so important here, this is the whole key, is that my top elbow relative to the floor does not pass her center line. If my elbow passes her center line, she can go to, to um, S mount, she can go to technical mount, she can start attacking my arms, all sorts of stuff. Okay, bring your right knee up towards my head. See that? Really bad because this elbow passed center line. Go back one step, bring your right knee up towards my head. Not gonna happen. So I need to make sure this elbow, top elbow relative to the floor stays past her center line. If it goes on the other side, I'm done. Yeah, so we're here, she's mounted, two hands on one hip. I take myself to that side and flatten the bottom leg. Most people try this move with their leg bent, it's not gonna work. Flatten the leg, and now look, I start picking up my knee, and it scoops right under her ankle. This is starting, this motion is starting to torque her hip and knee as I move her foot away from center line. So at some point her foot has to hurdle up above my knee, or she's gonna start getting damage to her knee and hip. So I start to lift my knee, boom, there's the foot. I gather here. Don't triangle, don't cross your feet, just pinch your knees. Now what I want to do is lift her knee off the mat, okay? All I have to do, pinch my knees, is what? I point my knees towards the ceiling. You see that? Her knee comes off the mat. I only need it to come off the mat the width of my leg. Once it comes off the mat the width of my leg, I gather her knee with my knee. And yeah, now I'm playing half. Now the beauty of this position is I'm already in an underhook, yeah? So I just hit the skate out. Bring her up above me, here, and now she's probably going to throw on a wizard and develop head height, but now I'm underneath her with a good half guard and my underhook. I can play a deep half, I can play lower leg shifts, I can play coming up on a dog fight, I can use any number of things I want from there. Okay, so one more time. She's in the mount, double stack the hands on one side. 
I'm gonna to look to move my body slightly less. I'm not gonna be able to move a whole lot, but I'm gonna be able to create asymmetrical hips, okay? Here, don't let your top elbow pass center line. Lift your knee, so my leg's flat on the ground. I can collect, pinch, lift her knee off the mat, recover her knee line. Now here I'm gonna start hip escaping to the side, and I use this underhook here, look. Here, she's going on the river, develop head height, but now I'm already playing my game. I can start looking to beat her here, right? So that is one of my favorite ways to escape the mount. Super low energy, very efficient. Again, like I always say, I want my jiu-jitsu always on a graph of uh, low effort, high efficiency. There's nothing more low effort, high efficiency in my experience in terms of mount escapes than that one. Of course, I play power hip escapes and trap and roll combos and all sorts of kipping escapes and things of that nature, but this is my go-to. Always, okay? And lastly, we're gonna look at back escapes. And when it comes to back escapes, I can go low, I can go high, I can go to the underhook side, I can go to the overhook side, I can try to bring the choking arm over my head and do all sorts of different things. Um, but my preference is generally to take myself to their underhook side and win out the position that way. But there's a few key factors I have to put into place. For me as an attacker, when I'm on the back, my favorite position is on the underhook side. So why would I want to go to the underhook side if I'm the one being attacked? Well, because I'm gonna put a few wedges in place that it's gonna make it hard for them, okay? For example, if she has my back, first things first, always remember when you're in a negative position or they have a dominant position, defend the submission first, right? If I start messing with her feet and I'm not thinking about the submission, she's gonna choke me, right? She's gonna, yeah, and now I'm, oh, right, now I'm close. Right? So first thing, defend the submission. When you have your back taken, you have a primary and secondary hand. The primary hand is always the opposite of their primary. So if this is her right hand, her choking arm, my left hand is my primary hand. Here's the test. I'll grab her hand with my right hand and hold as hard as I can. Walk your hand up my body and then go to the choke. This hand. Walk it up my body like a spider. Walk it up, I'll hold as hard as I can. Look, look, look. She still wins the position and she still gets to the choke. Okay? Do it again. So, walk it up my body, get to the choke. Never gonna happen, right? So, secondary is always the same side, primary is always the opposite side. So when you have your back taken, you wanna always keep your primary hand in the fight. This hand can do a lot of different work. My primary hand needs to stay in the fight, defending the neck, okay? So I'm playing here. Now, if we go to the underhook side and her head stays as a wedge between my head and the mat here, She's in a good spot. She's gonna be able to attack me. She's gonna be able to do her work, okay? So when I go to escape the back, right, I need to make sure that my head beats her to the mat. So I'm here, defending, I bring my head forward, and now I take my head to the mat, and she can't get her head between my head and the mat. And, and now from here, I'm gonna to look to take the bottom hook out, okay? I want to beat the bottom hook so I can start scraping her off and taking my back to the mat. If my back gets to the mat, she can't be on my back. So I'm playing here. I can do this. This is one option. I can straighten my leg back and pull it through, or I can use my hands. I don't like this one because it puts me in jeopardy. So I like to use this top foot, and I draw my knee out, and I step back on that foot. It's very important. Later videos will go over why. But I step back on this foot, and now I start to escape my hips to the mat. She's gonna start coming on top knowing she lost the position. So as she's coming on top, I'm gonna to push this knee inside my guard and start playing my half guard, right? Now remember, back control is the best if you're on the back and the worst position if you're the one with your back kicking in all of jiu-jitsu. In all of fighting, all of combat, having someone behind you is the worst place you could be, right? So any other position other than a submission is winning when somebody has your back. So even if I escape and they go to mount, I'm still progressing, even though that's not much better. So I prefer you try to find half guard or butterfly guard or something like that. But even so, as long as you can get out of back control, you are starting to progress. Okay, so one more time, she's on my back. I defend my neck first, primary hand, boom. Secondary hand, boom. Head forward, take my head to the mat, here. Beat the bottom hook, step on it. Start to come out. I'm pinching my knees around her top leg so she can't mount me very easily. Push the knee inside. Play my half guard. And now I'm ready to go into whatever attack I like to play. Boop. 
Nice? Okay, so those are um, the options I like to play, the escape routes I like to use when I'm escaping side control, when I'm escaping mount, when I'm escaping the back, right? These are just one from each position. I have maybe six mount escapes I like to play, and I run through each one. From side control, there's like eight things I like to do, right? From the back, there's three or four. And I seamlessly interchange them until I accomplish the goal. The goal is always to get your legs back in the fight, whether if you're in side control or mount, that's the main goal, get your legs back in the fight. And if someone has their back, it's any other position. That's the goal, right? So no matter what I have to do to get those positions taken care of, I don't care about the technique. I'll, change, I'll interchange them seamlessly. I have to accomplish that goal. Okay, so those are three options I really like for those positions. Um, let me know what you think. Try them out. Again, I'm Andrew. This is Aggie, back from Poland. We're gonna do some more techniques for you guys. We're here at Nexus Jiu-Jitsu and Folsom. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, any concerns, throw down in the comments, like, subscribe, join the team, gonna show you guys all the cool stuff over time. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.